That was reality for Lionel Messi during the World Cup qualifiers. Messi and Argentina flew into Brazil for a heavily anticipated matchup. And they came in thinking the worst case scenario was taking an L until things turned deadly. After suffering a 3-0 loss, the entire Argentina squad was so embarrassed, they wanted to get out the country as fast as possible. So instead of waiting for one of Messi's private jets, they all hopped on the Bolivian La Mia for a last minute flight. And takeoff was smooth. The boys were in the air, and this was something they'd been through a hundred times. But this time, they should have checked who was flying the plane. Four hours into the flight to Buenos Aires, out of nowhere, the plane sparked an error. So what seemed like a routine flight turned into a life or death situation. The plane was flying 20 minutes past its fuel capacity. So now, the pilots had just 18 minutes to land or else. As the plane started shaking, the pilots went into a panic, radioing everywhere they could until they finally found a landing spot. And with just a few minutes to spare, the plane came in hot. Once they landed, Messi and his teammates immediately hopped the hell off that plane. And even though they were traumatized, they had to be in another country by sunrise. So they were forced to finish their flight on a different plane. But little did they know, that was actually a blessing. Because right after the Bolivian La Mia refueled, it took off to another destination, but never made it. Directly impacting a mountain and killing 75 of its passengers. So Messi's lucky, man. Unlike Neymar. Because what he thought only cost 200k, actually almost cost him his life. See, Neymar always dreamed of living life in the fast lane. And there was one car he's always had his eyes on. A red Ferrari Spider. So right when Neymar got his first big paycheck, he hit the Rari dealership, splashed 275k, and just had to flex for some likes on the grand. But maybe he should have been thinking twice about living life 200 miles an hour. A few weeks later, it was game day. And Neymar woke up being spammed by his teammates. The club wanted to get in some extra reps at the practice facility. But since Neymar was being rushed, he forgot to check the weather. So he hopped in his Rari and was gone in 60 seconds. At the time, Neymar had a lot on his mind. Zero goals in six games, a court case where he was facing two years in jail. But none of that mattered when Neymar realized he forgot to buy new tires. And the rain hit. Then out of nowhere, he was crawling on a totaled Ferrari. But luckily, Neymar still made it to practice and continued to make headlines. Kinda reminds me of the criminal who almost killed a football legend just to make the news. Before Peter Mangs committed that sinister crime, he was busy becoming one of Sweden's most notorious murderers. And after going on a seven year killing spree, eventually detectives caught on, dug deep, and Peter was sentenced to life in prison. But instead of keeping secrets, he wrote a tell-all in his new book. And in one of the stories, he shocked the world, admitting what he secretly did to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Throughout the 2000s, Zlatan became one of Sweden's most iconic athletes. And because of his celebrity status, Peter wasn't just another thirsty fan. Instead, he saw Zlatan as the perfect victim. Peter admitted he sat in the shadows and analyzed Zlatan's every move. And with Zlatan constantly making headlines, Peter wanted a taste of the clout for himself. He saw Zlatan as an opportunity to go out with a bang. And one thing he kept his eyes on was Zlatan's supercar obsession. One day, Peter watched him pull up in his million dollar whip and parked in the middle of the street. So when he saw that, it was the final straw. Peter rushed home to grab a weapon. Cause he wasn't trying to ruin Zlatan's car, he was trying to end his life. But when Peter pulled back up, Zlatan was gone. And the rest was history. Because Peter was eventually sentenced to life in prison, nowadays Zlatan gets to drive cars and live in his house worry free. Unlike the football player, who was the victim of a deadly heist. After Deli Ali spent $2 million on a mega mansion, he thought 24-7 armed security would keep him safe. But out of nowhere, everybody around Dele, even his own teammates, started becoming victims of robberies. And that wasn't even the worst part. See, little did Dele know, he was being watched among the shadows. And one night, while he was in the crib playing pool, a group of robbers broke in and caught him lacking. The robbers pulled out knives, beat his ass, and weren't leaving without his entire jewelry collection. And once they found it, they fled the scene with $300,000 on their backs. But Dele's lucky, man. At least he only lost his ice. 
because what doctors tried to take from a football legend almost lost him his life. At just 19 years old, Thiago Silva traveled all around the world looking to become the greatest football player of all time. But just chasing his dreams almost got him killed. After a trip to Thailand, out of nowhere, he started feeling sick. A cough, a little sweat, eh, it probably wasn't anything too serious, so Tiago let it be. But just a few days later, his symptoms got even worse. Struggling to run, walk, or even breathe, he was immediately rushed to the hospital, where doctors ran test after test, and that's when they found out Tiago's lungs were completely filled with deadly bacteria. So the doctors told him if he didn't get medical treatment immediately, he had just two weeks to live, and the only way to save him was removing part of his lung. Now, obviously in a situation like that, it seems like a no-brainer. The tragic part about this was, if he went through surgery, he'd never play football again. So Tiago was faced with the toughest decision he could imagine, but eventually he gave in, and the doctors went to work. After all this went down, Tiago's family knew he risked it all for them. But deep down, they knew he was suffering worse than before. For Tiago, going on without football was basically living life without a purpose. So against doctor's orders, Tiago decided to just go for it. He took baby steps, got back on the pitch, and dedicated everything to his passion. Until that right there became the greatest decision of his life. Because eventually, he became one of the best defenders in football history. But when you have a come up like that, not everybody can be a fan. Some are killers. And Cristiano Ronaldo learned this the hard way. As we all know, Ronaldo's got a bit of a car fetish. But considering that's already caused him to come face to face with death, you'd think Ronaldo would have learned his lesson. Until one night, things took a lethal turn. After a match, Ronaldo wanted to show off for his girl. So he took her for a spin in his brand new Audi R8. And we all know Ronaldo, man. He didn't just buy this car for its looks. But all of a sudden, all he saw was red and blue. So he pulled over. As the cop came up to the window, you'd think Ronaldo would cooperate, right? But when the officer wanted his papers, Ronaldo asked, don't you know who I am? So cause he refused to hand over any ID, things escalated quickly. And being one of the most famous people on the planet, as soon as there was commotion, fans everywhere flooded the scene. But that's when a Ronaldo hater pulled up. Now, you'd think with officers around, everyone would, you know, avoid breaking the law. But this dude was a psycho. Cause right in front of the police, he literally threatened to kill Ronaldo. And when the officers heard, they had to let Ronaldo off the hook. Cause instead, they arrested the deranged hater. But see, Ronaldo ain't the only one who was almost killed because of a misunderstanding. Imagine playing in the biggest game of your career and nearly being assassinated. Well, it all went down during the 98 World Cup. David Beckham was becoming the face of football. And after being graced with the cover of FIFA 98, there was only one thing left to do. See, his England club hadn't pulled off a World Cup victory in over 30 years. So if Beckham helped him do it, he'd forever be the country's hero. And we all know how England loves their football, man. So this game wasn't just a win or go home. It was a do or die. But if only Beckham knew what he just got himself into. Either way, he came in heated. Throughout the first half alone, both teams scored two goals each. And not only was it a tie game, it damn near had fights breaking out. So everything was living up to the hype. Until, with an entire country depending on him, Beckham lost his cool, got a red card, and was sent off. That one mistake literally cost his country the World Cup. So the very next day, Beckham went from one of football's most loved players to an entire country literally wanting him dead. And not only did Beckham turn into public enemy number one, his entire family became a target. For years, Beckham was afraid to even step outside because he feared that at any moment, he'd almost die. One player who was millimeters away from losing his life on the pitch or the time another player's entire family was held hostage. And I know you want to hear more about that. 